Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at a new build and designing that build within Unified Design Center as they've come out with quite a few new changes since my last video. This build is for a commercial space and we'll be using Unify Network, Unify Protect, Unify Access, and Unify Talk. So let's jump right into it. The first thing we need to do, we need to go to the Design Center, which could be found at design.ui.com. Right off the bat, it shows us this build your Unify system in minutes, and this is just a template. So we have office, stadium, hotel, and then we have school. This is showing 700 meters squared with 10 camera zones and four door access, and it's building us together a predefined package which you could go down to a phone system and you could delete any of this if you don't want. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create a new project. And then we need to browse to our floor plans. And if you don't have a floor plan for your building, you could either use Wi-Fi Man, which would scan with LiDAR, or you could use a tool like Magic Plan, which you could find on your iPhone. Now I'm just gonna be uploading an image. So all we need to do is click on browse files. I have two different floors for this build. We have the first floor and then we have the second floor. We'll select the first floor and we'll press open. Now we could see this is a pretty big office area and both of the floors are pretty much similar, but each of the offices are gonna get two data drops each and they're gonna get a phone. The conference is also gonna get a phone and it's gonna get a data drop right in the middle. It's gonna actually be cored through the floor but we need to add that second floor. All we need to do is go up to the left-hand corner and then upload a floor plan. I'm just gonna call this floor two and we're gonna browse to that file. The next step is to set our floor plan scale and this is very important for our Wi-Fi. So if you don't actually have a scale number on here, like this office from here to here is 10 feet, you're gonna wanna go to site with the laser level to make sure that the scale is accurate. I'm gonna click on set scale and we're just gonna go from this corner over to this corner, because I know that that's 10 feet, and then we're gonna save that. You need to do the scale for both of your floors. So we'll set the scale again, and we know that this is 10 feet, and then we're gonna save it again. One other thing that may be new to you is if we look in the left-hand corner, we have this multi-floor. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. It brings up the multi-floor and shows us different heights. So I'm not too sure if this is the height of the floor or of the material in between the floors like concrete, but we're gonna assume that it's the height of the floor. So I'm just gonna say 10 feet because the ceilings are 10 feet high. I don't believe that this does anything right now and I'll quickly show you why I think that. If we place a device like a Wi-Fi access point, say right in the middle, and then we go to our second floor, we won't see that bleeding through to the second floor. I think that's something they're gonna be working on in the future and I hope they do bring that because it will show us the differences with our Wi-Fi levels when we have APs on the first floor and APs on the second floor. The next step we need to do is to draw our walls in and I'll just show you on one floor because it's exactly the same on the second floor. At the bottom, we could see here it says draw walls. Clicking on that, it brings up what type of material we could use and before at the beginning of Design Center, we only had three concrete, drywall, and glass. Now we have brick, metal, and wood, which is very nice to see. On the outside of this building, it's all concrete and windows, and then on the inside, it's drywall. So I already have concrete selected, and I'm gonna click on the corner of the building. I'm gonna just drag across to the other corner and then click, and then we're gonna go down and go all the way around this building. Now you may notice that there are windows in some spaces here, but we could add different points and we could break up these lines. So I'll show you that right now. By going back down to the bottom, we could click on select and then we could zoom in a bit. And we could see between here and here that it is glass. So I'm gonna click on the line and we're gonna add a point. We're gonna add it from there to the, where the window is add another point and then select the material. You notice this brick icon, which is to change our wall. So I'm gonna click on there and we're gonna select glass. So that's what we're gonna do for all the rest of these sections. We now have the concrete done as well as the glass. You could see a bit of yellow in this design as well. These doors leading out to the porch, those are wood doors. So I did add in the three wood doors. The next thing we need to do is add our drywall for our interior. So again, we're gonna click on draw walls and we're gonna select drywall for this. You could either do a wall or you could do a full room. If you do a room, you just select the corner and then you just drag and that's gonna create a square for you or a rectangle for the walls. I'm just gonna be doing it with the wall and doing it line by line and this will be sped up a little bit.
We have all of our drywall done, but you could see that we have a ton of different doors within this building. So again, we're gonna make different points. So we'll click on the line and then add a point where all of the doors are. We wanna make sure that we have the correct material so that it is set with the correct DB level. And then we could see our Wi-Fi settings or Wi-Fi signal where it's actually gonna be. After we do our design and we do our install, we always want to validate our Wi-Fi design with something like Echohoud or NetAlly AirCheck G3. And we will be doing a full video on that after we actually go to this installation. I've drawn in all of the walls for the first floor and the second floor. The next thing we need to do is start placing devices and our cabling. The first thing I'll do though is to place our rack which will be going into the storage room. So at the bottom, we can see where it says place devices. We have all of our consoles, switches, access points, and camera accessories, but we need to click on accessories and then go to rack cabinets. Once I select that, I'm gonna place this into the storage room, which is being used as the IT room. Now, after it's placed, we could click on the rack and we could go to the rename, we could duplicate, we could also go to the settings wheel. Clicking on the settings wheel, it's gonna bring up the rack and the rack size. Currently it's 12U, but we're gonna be using a 42U and you could go all the way up to 48U. We'll end up putting all of our devices in after what we're gonna use and kind of the layout of how we'll do our patch panels. The rack design is really nice so you get a visual understanding of how you'll lay it out when you're actually on site. We have our rack installed now, we need to do our cabling and our cabling is gonna be found under accessories as well. You'd see here that we have a two times RJ45 that is the smallest they have. They don't have a single RJ45 socket. It goes up to four and all the way up to 16. Each one of these rooms is gonna be getting two data drops. So I'm gonna select on this one and these are gonna be going towards the back of wall where the furniture is gonna be going facing the doors. In this office area, it is just an open area. And then each one of the other ones will just be going towards the back wall. The conference room is getting it right in the middle because they're gonna be having a big desk. And then these offices will be getting it at the back wall as well. The same thing's gonna happen on the upstairs floor. We have the data drops in place now. We need to do the cabling. Down at the bottom, there is this draw cabling and selecting this, we could either manually draw the cable or we could do a cable route. The cable route makes it a lot easier, but we have two different floors. So how does it figure that out? Well, there is this tunnel. So I'm gonna click on the tunnel. We're gonna go over to our network room and then click on it. This is the tunnel for the first floor. We're gonna go up to the second floor and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna select the tunnel and go to the storage room because that's where all the cabling will be going down into the network room. Now that we have both tunnels on the second floor, we're gonna be doing a link down to the tunnel two, which is the basement. Going back to the floor one, we could see this is doing our tunnel up, which is exactly what we need. Now with the tunnel in place, we could click on draw cables and then we could do a cable route. The cable route that we're gonna be taking is just directly down the hallway into the network room. So I'll click in the hallway and we'll go right into the network room and then we'll just select. We'll do this same thing for the second floor as well. With the cable routes now done on the first and second floor, we could always hit this auto draw connections, but we're not gonna do that quite yet because we still have a few cameras and access points to go and we want those to cable as well. So I'm gonna click on place devices and we're gonna go over to our Wi-Fi. For this install, we're gonna be using the new U7 Pro XG and we're only gonna need a couple of these. So I'm gonna place one in the office area, and one in the conference area, and then we'll go down to the first floor. On the first floor, we're gonna be placing this in the lunchroom, and then they do have an open area by the reception, which we'll be placing one, and this should give us full coverage with four APs within this building, but after it's deployed, we will do a validation. I've went ahead and placed all of the other devices that we're gonna be using in this build. For each one of the offices, we'll be using a Unify Talk G2 touch phone, as well as the lunch and the conference areas, they'll get a phone as well. We do have door access for this job. So what we'll be using is the enterprise access hub as it could handle up to eight doors. And I believe we have five. This does power all of our readers, which we'll be using the G3 Reader Pros so that we could use Apple Wallet support. 
Now we do have some cameras within this building and on the outside of the building as well, which you could tell by the blue color. If we want to realign this camera's viewing angle, all we need to do is click on this blue on the camera and then we can move it left and right, which is a very nice feature to see your coverage map. With all of the devices placed, we could now do that auto cable route. So I'm going to click on the draw cables and then we're going to auto draw connections. We're going to press finish and you could tell that it is actually giving us a length of how long these devices are away from our network rack, which gives us a nice indication of how much cabling boxes that we need to buy. Typically a box of Cat6 comes in a 1000 foot reel. So if you have 2000 feet or 1500 feet, you know you need two boxes. So you could really do nice pricing based off of that. With everything now done, we need to build out our network rack. And you could see the only thing in here is the Dream Machine Pro Max. And then we could go down to the bottom and it says Power Backup and the PDU. So I'm going to be adding a second Pro Max because we're going to be doing this in shadow mode at this site. For switching, we're going to be using two 48 port Pro Max PoE switches, but we also need to add in four patch panels. So clicking on Add Device, we could click on switching and then all the way at the bottom we have our keystone patch panel we're going to select four patch panels and then i'm also going to go up to the top and we're going to select the pro max 48 poe now it didn't align my rack how i want i don't want all of the patch panels on top of one another so i'm going to take one of the patch panels out i'm going to throw the switch in the middle and then we're going to do the same thing i'm going to bring this switch up and then a patch panel below it We'll be using the ether lighting cables and they're only about six inches. If you don't want to use the ether lighting cables, Ubiquiti does sell a horizontal cable manager that you could use. The only other thing that I need to add to this setup is our UNVR Pro. So I'm going to go ahead, we're going to go to network video recorder and we're going to select the MVR Pro. We don't need the enterprise MVR because we don't have that many cameras and we'll just leave it somewhere in the middle because we have a lot of audio gear as well as servers going into this rack. A couple other things that we could do within Design Center, if we go down to the bottom left-hand corner, we could see View Settings. On here, we have the device name. We could actually click on the device model, and then we could do the ports that it's automatically assigned to us. We could also do the device icon size, if you want to have it bigger or smaller, and we could do the visibility. So if you don't want to see them that clear on the map, we could also turn that down to almost zero. We'd also do the walls and we have that 100% right now, but we could drag it down so that we don't see the walls in there as well as the floor plan. You could bring the floor plan right down and you'll just see the walls that you've drawn in. With the Unified Design Center, Ubiquiti keeps updating it all the time because they keep coming up with new devices. So clicking on the Wi-Fi, you could see that we have all of the brand new access points. So the E7, the U7 XGS, the U7 XG, the U7 Lite, and so on and so forth. The same thing goes for any of their new hardware that is coming out. And if you're designing this for one of your customers, you could also export the plan. So with the export PDF, we could select either one floor or we could do all of our floors, and we could also include the following features, equipment lists, floor plans, camera coverage, ports, topology, Wi-Fi coverage, and the rack view. We could give the project a name and then the location, and who it was prepared by, and we could put our own custom logo, export this, then send it to our customer. Unified Design Center has come a long way since the initial release. The drawing of the walls makes it way easier. We now have our cable routes, and the hardware is actually updated in a timely fashion. This does make it very easy to plan a network for either a business or a home. But like I said, after you design your Wi-Fi, you always want to validate it with some sort of Wi-Fi validation tool. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of Unified Design Center. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.